Hello everyone, today we are going to talk about the Parrot Disco battery from the Sky Controller 2. This is a known issue with the original controller battery. Uh, after some time it gets really puffy and it will not hold the charge very well or at least it will not hold the charge under load at all uh, or it will drop the voltage while you fly from 90% to 20% and you risk of uh, remaining without control over your plane so um, today we are going to actually mod the battery and you might be interested about the wiring here this is a two cell battery that has a kind of protection board inside we are going to replace the cells with the normal lithium ion cells 18650 uh, type and we are going to keep the wiring, the original wiring, we are going to try to adapt the original board but we are also going to add a balance port to the battery so we can charge it as a regular lithium ion or lithium polymer battery with a hobby charger and that's going to improve the lifespan and we are also going to know the exact voltage of each cell which should prolong the lifetime a lot more also we have the possibility to choose the cells very easy uh, two lithium cells like this one will fit very nice into the controller and you can get this up to 3500 milliamps if you go with LG MJ1 cells or you can get something similar from Panasonic or Samsung also Sony makes some really nice cells that go a bit over 3000 milliamps don't go with cells that are rated for 5000, 5000 uh, uh, or uh, stupid things like that because on this cell size 3500 is the absolute top to make uh, all things nice and easy and to make it also safe I'm not going to solder the batteries like uh, most users do because heating up the cells might damage them not always but there's a possibility and also heating them up will decrease their lifespan so you don't want them to fail especially if you buy them new you just need a spot welder and if you are on a tight budget you can get something like this one it's very cheap uh, I'm going to leave a review for it somewhere here so you can check that out there and this charge is over a USB it has an internal battery with high capacity and high discharge And after a few spot welds and some uh, hot glue I get this uh, battery and I have welded here contact tab so I can connect to each cell. I have this uh, bridge here and I can connect to that one also for balance. And now we need to take this apart and uh, also I'm going to recover the electronics from here. The third wire here it's a temperature sensor or something like that. So. Uh, you actually can uh, use this only with positive and negative but if you want also you can recover that and use the original plug
and here are some uh, interesting things so you get two metal plates that uh, protect the battery from being stabbed because this is a soft uh, pouch type battery but look how fluffy it is after I have uh, taken those uh, metal plates out so these were a uh, real uh, incoming danger for even your house because this is, if bursts out when you charge it it's going to be a hell of a fire right so here is the board as you can see it's actually not much of a board there's no balancing board here it might have some uh, components under the board but uh, it's not a balancing one so we get these wires and they are labeled here you can see this T for a temperature sensor you have this P minus and we have this plus here and also we can measure them to check out and we should have something like 7 point something volts between the negative and the positive one here and yes you can see it's at 7.94 and we can also check the cells one has 3.97 and the other one has 3.97 which is actually very good on this battery they are still balanced but no more useful also in regards to the connection these uh, two ones here are the ones that are connected between the cells and these are the cells you have terminals here and here here and here and this is the common one this is the positive and this is the negative terminals so we are going to unsolder these tabs here from the batteries remove the board and then i'm going to wire it to this uh, battery here Alright, so that's how you kind of do it. Uh, I did it this way. Uh, there are a lot of other ways where you can do this a lot more nicely. But I have some other plans, some other mods in mind. So I'm going to leave it something like that. This is going to be heat shrink. Uh, also, I'm going to cover it not this type of tape. I'm going to use some uh, Captain temperature resistant tape to cover that up and also then heat shrink this. The wires will go out, the original board will stay out and I will fix this to the battery on the side here as there is plenty of room in uh, the controller box here. It will be something like that and I can plug this. And now I'm going to do a quick test and I'm going to plug this back in. And as you can see, it's not starting up and I'm going to tell you why this uh, small module here has a protection so in case the battery somehow gets over discharge in my case it was zero because it was disconnected it will stop working and you actually can reactivate it by plugging in the charger and I'm going to connect it green light red light 
and now if I power this on it's working and it's charging or doing something and I can unplug it and now it's working so I can turn it off and now if I power it on it works normally and I can check the voltage right now the work voltage let's see and this is at 7.6 volts and I haven't checked the cells they should be rather balanced but it's now easy to test them with having access to all the sides so this one has 3.81 and this one 3.81 so my battery pack is also perfectly balanced and now I can fully charge and go out for a test flight. The cells I have used have a true capacity of uh, 2400 milliamps tested. Actually they get up to 2600 uh, if you slow discharge them. So pretty good cells. Uh, they have been recovered from a faulty battery which was actually new battery. Alright, so that was it for now. I hope that you have enjoyed this uh, quick uh, video.